Ja läheks edasi järgmise ettekandega, mis tuleb Soomest. Irma Kaaram, Soome riiklikust haridusagentuurist. Ja the floor is yours. Ja... Ja räägib õpirendest Soomes, rahvusvahelisest õpirende ja lõimumise suundumusest Soomes ja nii palju sissehõtuseks, et kui me midagi teeme Eestis, siis me alati esimesene vaatame Soome poole, mida nemad teevad ja kui me sellel aastal Tartu ülikoolis oma nii-öelda välistudengite suundasid uuesti ümber vaatasime, siis me vaatasime ka Soome, Rootsi, Taani ja Norra kogemusele, et kuidas nemad on seda teinud ja nüüd me saame siis sellest kuulda. Ja please. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm afraid I didn't understand that much <laughs> of it. And, and good afternoon to everybody. Um, what I try to do in, in this presentation is to give a brief overview of the situation in Finland in, in international student migration. Uh, as um, was said, I, I work in the Finnish National Agency for Education, which is a governmental office directly under Ministry of Education and, and Culture. Uh, our aim is to both develop uh, education in general and, and to promote and um, support internationalization in education. And this is the supporting internationalization of especially higher education is the field where I am working. And, and this is the background of this uh, presentation also. Um, I would like to start uh, by saying that uh, international student mobility or student migration is a very topical issue in, in Finland, especially when we talk about recruiting international students and researchers in, in Finland. You can find a lot of policy uh, papers at national level where this is an aim, a direct aim, and, and uh, it's hope that we can attract uh, international students and make our a higher education system internationally attractive so that we can have more uh, students and, and researchers and staff also to our institutions. And this is directly linked, I would say, to a broader discussion of uh, aging society with uh, needs of having in, in the future more skilled labor force also from abroad and to make a Finnish society competitive. And, and I'm, I suppose this kind of uh, uh, discussions are going on also in other Western countries and European countries, not only in Finland, are probably very familiar to you. To give you one example is um, uh, relatively new policies to promote internationalization in Finnish higher education and research research to, um, to year 2025, launched by uh, Finnish Ministry of Education and Culture. And there you can find goals like uh, making uh, Finnish higher education a very top quality education and attractive to international students, researchers and staff. And also uh, goals like welcoming um, international talents to Finland and trying to make their entry to the countries as smooth as, as possible. Another example of this kind of policy and discussions in, in Finland might be a talent boost program, which is, which is a, a joint cross-sectoral program. Um, it's actually um, coordinated at the Ministry of Economy, Economic Affairs and Employment, but it links uh, several sectors and also local level, not only a national and national level and, and a ministry level. And uh, the central aim is to make uh, Finland attractive to international talents, including not only students, but also uh, specialists, um, researchers. Um, and, and also to kind of make better use of those uh, international talents uh, and highly skilled people who already are in, in Finland. One point I would also like to make, that this may not be uh, that relevant, but coming from a field of internationalization of higher education, it's more common for us to talk about international student mobility 
rather than student migration. I won't go into this discussion any deeper, but it might be interesting to think about whether this kind of wording has some effects on how we see the phenomena and what kind of challenges and opportunities we may, may see, even if we actually talk pretty much about the same, same thing, uh, students going to another country for their studies. So this is the situation at the moment uh, in Finland. The development, the figure shows the development of uh, foreign full degree students in Finnish higher education institutions. So the numbers uh, include only international students making a full degree in Finland, not shorter exchanges. Mm, and it's collected uh, by Statistics, Statistics Finland uh, from higher education institutions. And you can see that uh, there are about a little bit more than 20,000 uh, foreign full degree students in Finnish institutions. That makes roughly about 7% of the whole student population at the moment, which is a little bit more than the average level uh, in the OECD countries. It's quite e uh, the population of international students or foreign students, in, uh, it's quite equally distributed between the traditional research universities and the more professionally oriented universities of applied sciences. And if you look the curve, you can see that roughly between years 2005 till 2012, you could see a quite rapid growth in, in numbers. Then from 2012 onwards, it became more stable. And then the latest year, 2017, which is now the latest year we have this kind of data, uh, you can see a small drop. And this is due to uh, tuition fees to international students, but I'll, I'll come back to this a little bit later. Um, a big majority of uh, our international student population, when it comes to full degree students, come from outside the EU EEA area. About 75% of students are non-EU EEA um, citizens. Asia being the biggest uh, uh, area where they come. This is quite common. This is a global phenomenon that Asian countries are very active to send, send students. Um, however, uh, in, in Finland, uh, this share of uh, non-EU EEA students seems to be a little bit bigger than in some benchmarking countries like, well, Denmark, for instance, or Germany, where there are more European students. Um, our neighbor country, Russia, is the biggest uh, single nationality among the um, uh, foreign degree students, followed by China, Vietnam, and Nepal. And especially in countries like Vietnam and Nepal, the growth has been really, really rapid during the couple of last years. Yeah. So I promise to come back uh, to the issue of tuition fees. Starting from autumn 2017, uh, Finnish higher education institutions uh, start introduced uh, tuition fees to non-EU EEA areas, uh, citizens and, and students. And this certainly has had impact, at least on a short run, um, to international student flows. Here you can see the number, the, the statistics shows the number of new first year students in, uh, at different um, degree levels in, in Finnish, both universities of applied sciences and, and traditional research universities. Um, with the bachelor level degree students on the, on the top in the blue line and uh, master level uh, students at the universities in, in the green line. And what you can clearly see is that there is a big drop in the number of new first year students in 2017. And this is clearly uh, the effect of the tuition fees. Maybe not that much of the tuition fees itself, but in, during this process, Finnish higher education institutions that offer a lot of English taught programs uh, for international students. They also, 
I know that they also looked a little bit more carefully what are the programs they really want to offer to paying students. So part of this drop might be um, caused not directly by students not wanting to come to Finland, but maybe that there was a little bit less of the potential uh, programs for international students because of this kind of a thinking that uh, institutions uh, were was taking place in institutions. I don't know if you can see the light blue and yellow lines uh, at the bottom of the figure. They are the number of new students, uh, new um, foreign students in master degrees in universities of applied sciences and bachelor degree students in universities. And, and there you can see that the numbers are very, very low. So we don't have that much uh, international students in, in those levels. So in Finland, the kind of a division of labor when it comes to recruiting international students between uh, universities of applied sciences and traditional research universities is quite clear. The universities of applied sciences, they take care of the bachelor level and universities take care of the masters and then the doctoral level. The drop in the numbers of uh, new foreign students in uh, 2017 was uh, only in the, in the students or, or non-EU EEA citizens. So those who, had, who are supposed to pay the tuition fees. And actually the number of, um, of uh, uh, EU students uh, was increasing a little bit. So it is very interesting to see in the coming new uh, few years what will happen. On, on the short term, there has been an impact and, and the numbers have gone down. Maybe also the uh, composition of the nationals uh, of foreign students will change, but this is of course something that we'll, we'll see only in years to come. I might add to this that uh, uh, higher education institutions are supposed to have some kind of scholarship scheme for their international students compensating the, the effects of, uh, of uh, tuition fees. And it varies a lot. Uh, it, it, it's developed by the institution themselves. There are no national scholarships for international full degree students at the, at the moment in Finland. So it's an institution that uh, gives them and um, it varies a lot according to the institution. Uh, integration it's, uh, is important and one underlying idea behind the national policy of recruiting international students is not only to recruit them to study in Finland, but also there is a hope that at least a relatively big share of them would stay in Finland. There are no clear or concrete target numbers for this retention, but it's definitely an underlying idea that we would like uh, rather many of them staying in Finland. We have some national level data on employment on international uh, students, actually on, on students and graduates in Finland, but that includes also uh, international students. So this uh, figure shows the situation uh, of um, foreign graduates three years after graduation. The uh, first line there is a situation in 2016. Those international students who graduated three years after that is uh, 2013, and then there are the previous years. Uh, and uh, the blue part shows the share of those international graduates who are working full time uh, three years after graduation. Green is the one who are working part time along with studies. Light blue is the one who are students. Yellow is, we, we don't know, or so some, doing something else. And then the red one is the ones who have left the country. And uh, uh, from the picture you can see that less than, a little bit less than half of the international graduates or foreign graduates are still working in Finland three years after graduation, either full-time 
or part-time. And the share of these uh, uh, graduates who are employed has decreased a little bit in, in 2016. One problem with this, uh, with this data is that it shows that about, uh, well, a little bit less than one third of the graduates have left the country. But here we see, do see a problem because in order to come to this category, you have to um, uh, register that you are leaving the country. So we are quite sure that there are more students who leave the country, but now they are in this yellow section of uh, students, we don't know where they go. Anyway, it's very difficult to uh, compare these numbers internationally, but I have looked some studies, uh, especially in Denmark and, and in Holland. Of course, they have different numbers, different ways of calculating, but it looks on, on the basis of them that the uh, retention rate and employment rate in Finland is, is quite actually high at the moment. And, and quite good in, in, in that way. But of course, we know from the students and from institutions that there are challenges in, in, for international students to find employment, pretty much because of a lack of uh, local language, lack of networks, lack of uh, understanding of Finnish labor market, and sometimes prejudice from, uh, from the employer side also. I might add to this that uh, in Finland, uh, international graduates are able to have one year of a uh, job-seeking permit after graduation in order to find a job. I would like to um, end my presentation by turning the picture kind of upside down and looking shortly the uh, Finnish students who go abroad. And this is interesting because in Finland at the national and policy level, this is something we don't discuss at all. There are no national policy or national targets to, to encouraging Finns to go abroad or, or whatsoever. So there is a, a lot of silence <laughs> in, in this matter uh, at the national level. But at the same time, we do see that the number of Finnish uh, students going abroad for full, de full degree studies is uh, increasing. These are the figures from a uh, social insurance institution and it in includes Finns who have taken their study grant abroad. We have portable study grant and we can have, have it also to uh, studies abroad. And, um, it, it has also already been mentioned that Estonia is quite a popular target destination, but also in the, the other neighbor country, Sweden, and then the traditional Anglo-American uh, uh, research and study countries like UK and, and the United States. And also Germany and Netherlands are actually quite strong in this field. There are different reasons why Finns go abroad and, and it may vary according to a field, but definitely, especially in the field of medicine um, or, or psychology or law, where there are very restricted study places in Finland, the opportunity to get a study place is an important motivation for Finns to study abroad. And then other motivations are, um, well, wanting to make an international career or having, wanting to understand a foreign environment and, and work and study in, in, in a foreign environment. We made, a, in, an, uh, in a EDUFIB, we made a survey on, on this uh, student population some years ago and we found that there are a variety of reasons why Finns uh, decide to go abroad to study. We have an older data uh, from about uh, 10 years back uh, indicating that a little bit more than half of these Finns who study abroad are returning back to Finland in a couple of years after their graduation. But this is something that would, of, of course, be interesting to know a little bit more if the situation have changed. So I will end up my presentation with these views. Thank you very much.